Fascination for sport parachuting is rapidly expanding to the related yet more thrilling feats of free fall skydiving. For the first time, the courage and daring of free fall skydiving is presented in a feature motion picture. Director John Frankenheimer, who superbly captured the challenge of Grand Prix racing, now focuses his camera on men drawn to the flame of danger, men known as the Gypsy Moths. The earliest idea for a parachute is credited to the prolific genius of Leonardo da Vinci. An astonishing idea for its time, Leonardo's parachute never became more than a simple sketch. And yet, this forecast was vested with a germ of genius that would eventually blossom into reality 470 years later. Reality is the most important element to director Frankenheimer in filming both dramatic and skydiving sequences. To this end, Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer and producer Edward Lewis sent the Gypsy Moths production company of 150 to 12 Kansas locations for three months of filming. Stars of the film are Burt Lancaster, Deborah Carr, Gene Hackman from Bonnie and Clyde fame, and Scott Wilson from In Cold Blood. I've never seen a picture really where more attention has been paid to the authentic way to do things. John has collected them, John Frankenheimer has collected around him some of the very best parachutists in the entire country. Interestingly enough, he didn't get regular professionals. He got amateurs who have been jumping for years in spot jumping, exact jumping. And he got them to do things that they had never done before. The courage and daring of seven men is responsible for the skydiving film. Meet Carl Banish. Electrical engineer, Mike Mills, surveyor. Garth Taggart, aerospace components inspector. Russell Benefield, aerospace quality controller. Jay Gifford, sheet metal craftsman. Jerry Roulard, law enforcement officer. And Dave Thompson, craftsman. I didn't exactly know how I wanted to film the aerial sequences when I started. I had to experiment and try all kinds of things. And I had to find really young guys who were willing to do that. Of all the experimental techniques used in the gypsy moths, None gave more amazing results than the skydiving helmet camera, here being aligned for accuracy. Jay, why don't you sight my uh, camera on the chimney over there, and I'll align this Newton ring sight on the chimney also, so that I see the same thing. OK, I have it right on the top. OK, I'm a little bit high and to the left. There, are you still on? Yeah, right on the top. Good, we have it. And also, trying to capture speed has been a problem because if you're moving at 180 miles an hour and the object you're photographing is moving at 180 miles an hour, it looks like you're both standing still. During pre-production, we went through a long period of thinking up and developing stunts. And one of these stunts that we thought up was taking a gas station hand towel and flying it through the air. And the first time we tried it, we had uh, very little control. And we found that because of the drag on the, on the towel, uh, it was slowing the jumpers up that were hanging onto the towel, but the cameraman, without this drag, went right on by and couldn't stay at the same level. We also had a very difficult time trying to have a man hang onto the middle of it. The centrifugal force would pull your arm up when you tried to rotate it. So we developed a, a banner or scarf that was made of 4,000 pound nylon tubing with sections of parachutes sewn on for a visual effect in the air and easy sighting from the ground. Once the divers solved the technical problems, they worked to give the audience a feeling of participation.
Shot! Go! Revolutions you think we can get from A5? 12 easy. Once it gets spinning fairly well, you're going to have all you can do to hold on. Since a man's life depends on each parachute opening, the care and packing of each chute is top priority. Packing a parachute is relatively easy once you know the correct procedure. The first thing you do in packing a parachute is tying it down and applying tension to the whole system. Then you flake the sections individually. 24 sections of the parachute in all, and each one is comprised of several different panels. Next step is to slip on the sleeve. The sleeve slows the opening and reduces opening shock makes the opening much more bearable for the jumper. The pilot chutes attached to the sleeve and are what pull the sleeve off of the parachute. Once we pull the sleeve over the parachute, we then stow the lines on a flap of the sleeve. We stow the lines in rubber bands. Next, we attach the parachute itself to the container. Quick release fittings on the, con on the harness. We fold the parachute into the container in neat S folds. We use S-folds because when the parachute deploys, it comes out very neatly in an accordion-type fold like this. We put the pilot chutes on top of the sleeve and compress the pilot chutes, compress the springs inside the pilot chutes on top. We pull up the sides of the container, across the top of the parachute, and insert pins through cones which keep the container closed until we wish to open it, at which time we would pull the ripcord handle which is connected to these pins by a long cable thus opening the pack and allowing the pilot chutes to spring out and catch air. The last thing that happens in the opening sequence is the first thing you do when you pack. The actual story concerns three stunt parachute jumpers who come into a Midwestern town for a weekend to give a show on the 4th of July, or the day before the 4th of July. And uh, it's what happens to them during those two days, and what happens to the people that they come in contact with. I like to do all my films on location if I possibly can. I feel that it adds a great deal of authenticity to a film. I feel that I work much better on location. If we have gusts of wind uh, over 22 miles an hour for less than five minute periods, we have a no jump condition. If it stays under 22 miles an hour for longer than five minutes, then we can jump. When they land, they, they have a chance of getting drugged and also landing in a uh, hazardous area, like, uh, for instance, the farmhouse over there. How slow do the winds have to be going for the dangerous, really dangerous jumps? One to 12 miles an hour. At 200 feet above the ground, I noticed I was drifting towards a farmyard. There was nothing except to more or less close my eyes and hope. I missed a barn. My chutes collapsed around me and lambs ran right in one of them and tangled up. The unpredictable Kansas wind inevitably caused accidents during the filming of 1,300 jumps. Dave Thompson here takes the hard landing that broke his collarbone. True to the tradition of a professional, Dave finishes the scene with Burt Lancaster, his arm hanging limply by his side. The skydiving is so fantastic, but uh, I'm sure it'll be something that will appeal to young and old and everybody because it's being shot in a way that nobody has ever seen this skydiving done before. And We're going to have come up with what they call a cape jump. Now, that sounds to me like it's that old barnstorming bat wing. The bat stunt was a big drawing card in the 20s and 30s.
there weren't too many who survived it. This is the first set I designed for a set of bat wings. I made them out of burlap because we wanted as much air to pass through as possible. Now, we also took the added precaution of putting slots in here. We didn't know how much strength it was going to take to hold these wings. As far as holding on to these wings, I found that just small handles out to the end was working out the best. After a few test jumps on these wings, I found that there was a couple items that we could salvage, mainly the handle and the way they was attached to the jumpsuit. This is essentially my first set of wings. I had a jettison system running along here all the way and connected up on the arm under here. I had uh, wooden dowels in here. Of course, they broke when they hit the ground. I had to replace all the dowels. So we eliminated those, cut the aluminum rods and put in here instead of wooden so they wouldn't be breaking all the time. I jumped them a couple of times this way and I found that the wings were way behind me. They shouldn't have been up that high. Also, they were a terrible strain on the arms with this larger size. The biggest problem turned out to be regulating your rate of descent relative to that of the cameraman. You found the rate of fall between you and the cameraman quite a bit different. Uh, we find that we can slow up so much more than he can that he just falls away from us. But when we dive, uh, we dive faster than he does. You can really streak past the cameraman. Of course, your arm would be 120 miles an hour. Well, actually, in a dive, you can get better than 120 here. What do you think you can get? Sure, I think 150 at least, even with the wings. When I land with the wings, we have five aluminum stays under each arm. And uh, consequently, when you land and roll, they could jam up into your ribs. And it, uh, you just have to do it just right, or, or else you'll uh, impale yourself on, on one of the bat wings. The next shot, Alan, will be parasail. Two Sundays in a row, we were supposed to come out here and practice. Oh. And uh, one day it rained just terribly. The other day, well, the winds were up to about uh, 45 miles an hour. See, the whole trick in this thing is the wind. It's in the area of the wind that you run into real danger. We're able to do it today because the wind stayed constant between 10 and 15 miles an hour. Inflate the canopy, please, for bird Lancaster's parachute. Inflate the canopy. Now, you can help us by being quiet, please. Don't applaud until I tell you. Roll your camera. All right, applause. I've done it! Para commander parachute can, in the middle of a strong gust of wind, keel over, and that would be terribly dangerous. I was apprehensive not having done it, but... marvelous quiet feeling. Uh, it's very much like, I suppose, being underwater or being on a sailboat without a motor, without any sound but the sound of the winds. You know, I'd never done this before. Uh, I mean, I actually never did it before we did the shot that you just saw. You feel yourself being lifted by the parachute and you're also being pulled along by the, by the, the automobile. Actually, I, of course, I wanted to do it again immediately and we did it three times for the camera. So I find it, to me, it's a first in my life and I'm very excited about it. There are many exciting firsts in the Gypsy Moths as men go to incredible heights just to see how far they can fall. Pull it! Pull it! There's natural drama in all the elements of skydiving. And there's equal drama in the lives of the men who are skydivers. All of it is captured on film for the Gypsy Moths. <laughs>